Hello. This is the third and final video in a series that I've been doing on the drug war. This one pertains to the Pandora's box, nature of drugs. It's a principle that doesn't apply just to drugs. I haven't named it yet. Maybe you can help me with that. When the government decides to ban a product, it's usually under the guise that it is evil. It sounds like we're just banning the product. We make the product sound evil and we're banning the product, except that banning a product really means that you're criminalizing a product. So you are making any person who engages in the sale or transfer or use of the product, you're making that person a criminal. That's what banning a product is. It sounds more sanitized when you say that you're banning the product because it doesn't sound like you're criminalizing a person. It sounds like you're just getting rid of a product. What I want to look at is how realistic is it to presume that by making a law that we can then eradicate a product. The feasibility of that is based on just a couple of things. So there are some products that are actually easier to get rid of, like elephant tusks. Here in Minnesota, I would have a hard time getting a hold of elephant tusks. For the obvious reason that keeping an elephant farm here would be difficult to conceal and not feasible in light of our climate. On the other hand, there are all kinds of products that we attempt to prohibit and the raw materials are readily available. This is why the prohibition of alcohol was so unrealistic because any organic product can be fermented and therefore turned into alcohol. So here's the Pandora's box principle. As long as we have the raw materials and the technology to make any given product and there are people who want that product and are willing to pay for it unless that product has limited raw materials or we can get rid of the actual knowledge of how to make the product. It is not possible to get rid of it. Pandora's box is open and we're not closing it. It's said that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. If I were to say snap my fingers right now and eliminate all the heroin off the face of the earth. I would have to also eliminate all of the raw materials that go into making heroin. And the reason is that otherwise heroin production would start right up again. And that applies to a lot of products. It also applies to guns. Right now it is possible to manufacture a gun with a 3D printer in your home in three hours. So if we were to snap our fingers and eliminate all the guns off the face of the earth, Pandora's box is open and there are plenty of raw materials that can be used to manufacture guns. So whether a manufacturer in China, whether a 3D printer at home, someone will step in to meet that need and there's not a single instance where we have demand, technology, and raw materials where we have been able to turn back the clock and close Pandora's box. When it, when it comes to products that we think are bad or create fear in us, there's a desire to try and ban those products and we just look at the product itself as evil. But what it comes down to, we've learned from the lessons of prohibition, it's more advantageous to have those products be legal and available to law-abiding citizens. Only law-abiding citizens obey the law. Where does the demand come from, for the most part, for banned products? Well, it comes from people who don't care about the law. Arguably, the people who care the least about the law are typically criminals. So people who are intent on committing crimes are the most motivated to obtain guns, drugs, prohibited products. If what we really want is a safer society, the worst thing that you can do is ban a product, creating a black market. We need to look at the unintended consequences of the people that are actually being hurt. And the bottom line is that drugs, to the extent that drugs are a problem, whatever type of drug we're talking about, to me there is nothing morally superior about prescription drugs versus street drugs. It is societally harmful to treat drugs as a criminal problem versus a social problem and by that I'm referring to drug abuse. Pandora's box is open on whatever the product may be. It's not possible to close it unless you would magically be able to eliminate all the raw materials that exist in a controlled substance. And if that is not possible then it's not going to be possible to prohibit the product. No matter how much you or I may not like the product itself. Thanks for watching.